Johnny Dollar. George Reed here, Floyd's of England. Hiya, George. Johnny, I just received a frantic call from Mr. Alvin Peabody Cartwright. Isn't he always? What? Isn't he always frantic? I guess you have a point there. Yeah, how is that eccentric, absent-minded, sweet old character? Well, frantic. You said that. But, as you know, he's one of our most valuable clients. Yeah, because of those nice fat insurance premiums he pays every year. Exactly. So it's important that we never hesitate to serve him when he calls on us. So what goes? He wants you out on the West Coast immediately. Oh, why? Well, he didn't say, as usual. You know how he is about these things. Oh, yeah, I know. And the last time he called, it was about somebody who was trying to murder him. Exactly. But the time before that, it was just to give me a Christmas present. I know. Okay, George, his place in Beverly Hills? No, he's up in Santa Barbara at the home of Mr. Rockland Rockwell. Rockwell. Also a client of ours, also extremely wealthy. Well, also... good. Maybe I can drag down a nice big fee on this one. Also, Johnny... Yeah? If this thing involves Mr. Rockwell rather than Cartwright, well, believe me, it may be plenty serious. Oh? Uh -huh. Okay, George, I'll be in touch. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. The Floyds of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the too much money matter. Expense account item one, one seventy one forty for a plane that got me to Los Angeles early the next morning. Item two, fifty dollars deposit on a rental car, and the drive up the coast of Santa Barbara took me a little under two hours. A gas station attendant who gave me directions to the Rockwell place seemed quite impressed that I was going there. I found out why about 20 minutes later after driving up to the top of a high, densely wooded hill. Yeah, there must have been 10 acres, all of it beautifully landscaped. Broad, sweeping lawns. And on the wide, winding road up to the main house, I must have passed at least a dozen gardeners and nurserymen, tending not only the vast lawns, but the well-ordered shrubbery and the magnificent trees, the myriad flower beds. As for the house itself, well, to call it a castle would almost be an understatement. All of it, built of native stone with towers, turrets, and parapets. And purely incidentally, there must have been seven or eight expensive cars parked in the driveway. Yeah, I felt almost timid about raising the heavy iron knocker. Yeah, real impressive. With Johnny! Hiya. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let me down. Yeah, hi, Mr. Cartwright. You're a good boy, Johnny. Only, uh, I expected nothing less than three or four uniformed butlers to let me into a joint like this. <laughs> Isn't it a lovely little place? Y you call this little? Well, if Rocky Rockwell ever gives in to me and sells me this house, yeah, or if... If anything happens to him... Oh, uh, you think something may? Oh, now, that's a silly question. Why else do you think I'd send all the way to Hartford for you? Oh, this is a terrible situation, Johnny. It's now, well, you terrible. better tell me all about it, then. Well, then don't just stand here at the door letting in the flies. Oh. Come on inside and I will. Yeah, sure. Johnny, I thought that I've had reason to think that maybe my life might have been in danger now and then. Oh, I know. But always, thanks to you, that danger's been removed. But in the case of Rocky here, oh, and he's an old friend... Well, Johnny, I honestly don't know what you can do about this and this, this whole terrible thing. But you will, won't you? I mean, you'll do everything you can. Well, where is Mr. Rockwell? Oh, oh, brave, brave man that he is. Rocky is going right ahead with his parties. He's entertaining, just as though nothing was wrong. Uh, entertaining of whom, Mr. Cartwright? Of, of, of anybody, everything. Huh? It, it, oh, now, don't you understand, Johnny? That's all he does. Oh. He gives hunts and balls and parties and entertains people. Well, what would you do if you had all his money in this beautiful place and all the time in the world to do it? Uh, well, I don't know. Well, of course you would. So, right now, Rocky and his guests are out riding on a fox hunt. <laughs> you know, yoinks and tally-ho and suey and all the rest of it. You know. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, just... Just as though everything was all right. Uh-huh. But it is. Oh, no, no. No, it certainly isn't. And if this thing, this, 
This terrible, look at this tragic... This... Here, here, this... this what, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah. What? <laughs> well, you still haven't told me just what you're so worried about. What's the matter with you, boy? I'm worried about my friend, Rocky. Rocky Rockwell. But why? Ro huh? Oh! Oh! Well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, of course. Well, because... Because he's... He's going to be murdered. You're... You sure that? Yes, Johnny. Murdered. Hello. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Too Much Money Matter. Mr. Cartwright, you'd better tell me exactly what reason you have for thinking Mr. Rockwell may be murdered. Maybe he will be it, unless you can do something about it. Why? Well, Johnny, I... Well, I'd rather he told you about it after he and the rest come back from the fox hunt. Well, look, if this is such an emergency... Of course it is! Okay, then. First, first, I want to show you around this lovely little house. Huh? You know, to see what you think of it, in case Rocky does decide to sell it to him. Oh, now, wait, Mr. Cartwright. Or, uh, heaven forbid... In case something happens to the poor man. But if it's so urgent that I get to work on this case, I, I told shouldn't... you it is, didn't I? Now come along and I'll show you the house. Mr. Carter. Not another word, Johnny. Come along. Well, I suppose a description of the Rockwell Mansion seems out of place in a report of this kind. But it's just too fabulous to pass up with only a word. The reception hall where we started was floored with polished marble. There was heavy oak furniture and huge gilded mirrors, a wrought iron chandelier. On one side, a broad oaken staircase led up to the second floor. The ribbing, uh, the living room, the main salon, well, it must have been 80 feet long with a 15 or 16 foot ceiling, full length French windows, and a tremendous granite fireplace with a slab of finished oak for a mantelpiece. A thick, lush oriental carpet covered almost the entire floor. And then there was a music room with not only two concert grand pianos, but a full pipe organ. The main dining room could have seated at least 100 people. And there was a morning room with walls of patterned silk instead of wallpaper. A couple of private little sitting rooms. The library must have held literally thousands of leather-bound books on mahogany shelves that reached from floor to ceiling. The den, in addition to a study, was paneled in richly green walnut. So was the billiard room in the huge basement. As for the bedrooms, I mean the five- and six-room suites on the second floor... Well, why go on? We ended up back in the den. Or maybe it was only one of the den. Well, do you like it, Johnny? Wow. Well, now, what does that mean? After all, I may be able to buy it for only two or three million. Unless, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Johnny... But why, Mr. Conroy? Why do you think he's in danger? How should I know why? And why should I be bothered with trifles like that? When the, when the, oh, oh, look, huh? look, I see, here they come. They're riding gaily over hill and dale. They're returning from the hunt. Oh, Mr. Rockwell's with them? Of course he is. So, Johnny, you stay right here. Well, now, look. And I'll go out and fetch him to come in and tell you everything. Well, Mr. Cartwright. A few minutes later, when Mr. Cartwright brought him into the den... Well, Rockland Rockwell was hardly the stately, dignified sort of person you'd expect to be the lord of such a manor. Instead, he was a gross, almost disgustingly fat, florid sort of man who wheezed as though he was about to draw his last breath. I wondered how he'd survived the rigors of a fox hunt, or more to the point, how he'd found a horse powerful enough to carry him over the jumps. Uh, he plumped into a chair and got right to the point. Uh, it's, uh, it's as simple as this, Dollar. Uh -huh. Years ago, over in England, I pulled a real fast one on one of my competitors over there, uh, a fellow named Ashley, Lord Jacob Hunter Ashley, uh, Britisher. Oh, I see. Uh, Britisher. And he did it so clever, yes, he never knew that I was behind it all. He thought that I was still his friend, uh, especially when I gave him a... Uh, uh, a couple of thousand of those British pounds to keep him and his wife and kid from starving. Uh -huh. uh, I put him out of business, ruined him, 
Dollar, it got me all of this. You like my place? Uh, it's uh, impressive. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's impressive. Impress anybody. Yes, sir. Yeah. But go on, please. Well, Dollar, I figured I'd been smart enough that nobody would ever know that it was me trick Ashley, especially when Ashley finally died, not even knowing himself. But now somehow Ashley's son, Marvin, had uh, been one of those worthless actors, a uh, play actor all his life, and somehow Marvin Ashley has found out. Well, uh, how do you know, Mr. Well, uh, how does he know? Why, John. Well, Mr. Cartwright, how? Huh? But, uh... Well, I don't know, Jack. Uh, Mr. Rockwell? Uh, a few months ago, Marvin wrote me from England and said he was coming here and, uh, to take bloody revenge for the poverty, poverty I inflicted upon his father and family. And, uh, his exact words, Dollar. Exact uh, words, uh, huh? Yeah, words. Well, then he must have been quite a ham. Uh, yes, and, and then a few days ago... Uh, a uh, telephone call, that silly British accent, uh -huh. just like his father. Young Ashley. Yes, Marvin Ashley, to say that he was here in the States. I see. And, and uh, I told him that uh, <clears throat> I'm a changed man, Dollar. Well, I hope so, Rocky. Yes, 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 I told him that I'd make it up to him and give him anything he wants. Uh, told him it's been on my conscience, and, and, and it has, Dollar. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sure it has. But, but he told me that he's coming here, that he's going to kill me. Rocky, for what you did, I don't blame him. I know. Yes, well, if I'd have known such a thing about you... I know, I know. But I'm sorry now. I, I'm sorry. Why? Because you're scared? I say I'm sorry. Isn't that enough? All right. Don't you see? Don't you see, Dollar? Unless you can somehow find him, he'll murder me. Murder me! And now, Act Three of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Rockwell, if I'd known this about you, uh, and I thought you'd earned all your money honestly. Uh, who are you to talk, Alvin? Did you earn yours honestly? Well, of course I did. Uh, uh, I inherited it. Oh, now, look, look. All gentlemen. right, all right, Dollar. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Ashley is right in wanting to kill me, but oh. it's your duty, your duty to see that he doesn't. Whether you like it or not. Okay, okay, maybe so. At least yeah. until I can get the police here. Uh, the police? And expose me for what I am? I mean, I mean, I mean for what I once was? Maybe you were right the first time. Attaboy, Johnny. Mm. I'm with you. Why, Rocky? You shut up, Alvin. No, uh, listen, Dollar. Marvin Ashley could even be one of the people here in my home right now. You mean you don't uh, even know all your house guests? Uh, how can I? Uh, there must be 20 of them. 20 or more. Sure, some of them are friends, but some are friends of friends, or um, friends of friends of friends, or I, I, I entertain people all the time. Everybody knows it, so... Anybody comes who wants to. All this so you can show off your wealth. All right, all right. So what if it is? Eh? How much do you know about young Ashley? His looks, his bill. Eh, nothing. How old is he? Well, he uh, he could be uh, thirty-five or forty by now. Uh, well, if he hasn't no. shown his hand, made any attempt to get at uh, you. If he hasn't yet, then he will. And if he's here now, you've got to find him. Well, Dollar, I'll, uh, give it some thought. I didn't like this, because I didn't like the man Rockwell. But a job's a job, and after all, I was on assignment. There were nearly 30 people at dinner that evening, and Rockwell made a good host, even though he didn't know the names of half of them, and he gave no sign that he suspected any of them. Nor did I. 
Nor did I see anyone who looked or sounded English, much less like any actor I've ever known. After dinner, Rockwell took me aside. Well, well, Dollar. Dollar, is he here? Uh, have you spotted him? No. Well, but you've got to, boy. Because the more I think about it, the more sure I am that he must be here by now. Maybe, maybe not. So you've just got to stay with me all the time. Every minute. Now, look, Mr. So Rockwell. come along. Gibson, Stratton, Edwards, and Peterson want to play some pool. Uh, pool down in the billiard room. Gibson, Stratton? Well, you met them. You met them at dinner. So we'll play some pool and get better acquainted with them. Well, look, I'm afraid I'm a little come rusty. Come along, I... come along, Dollar, because don't forget. If Ashley is here under some other name, he's going to stay close to me, too. <laughs> them to the billiard room where the four he'd mentioned were waiting to play. After being reintroduced to them, I was satisfied none of them was an English actor by the name of Marvin Ashley. Needless to say, none of them called himself by that name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good shot there, huh? Uh, uh, Stratton, is it? Yeah. Uh, that's right. Thanks, uh, Mr. Rockwell. Well, uh, go ahead now and uh, sink that four ball. Go ahead. Mm, yeah. Uh, it looks like a yeah. bank shot. It's the only bank way. Shot. Well, here goes. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad, Stratton. You might have made that with a massa shot. Uh, with a what, Mr. Gibson? Massa. Uh, massa shot dollars when you you uh, you hold the cue up vertical and. Oh yes. Uh, oh, I'll show you one dollar after this game is over. Dollar. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, name seems kind of familiar. Oh, does it, Mr. Gibson? Oh, well, I come on wrong, now, Edwards. You know, I... What are you waiting for? See if you can get that four ball. Uh, sure, Mr. Rockwell. Uh, sure I can. Uh, four ball. And the five and the six yeah. and all the rest. <laughs> you watch this. Yeah. Uh, tell me, do uh, you ever get up San Francisco way, Dollar? Well, not often, Mr. Gibson. Why, are you in business up there? Yeah, in a brokerage office. Oh, Rockwell's one of my accounts. <laughs> I doubt if he even knows it, though. I had introduced myself like a perfect stranger when I came down here for the weekend. Yeah, I can understand that. Already. Okay, now, Peterson, see how you can do uh, yeah, Five ball, eh? Do... Well, I certainly missed that time. I got the four ball and nothing else. Uh, uh, <laughs> Edwards, is it? Yeah, that's right, Sam Edwards. And your name again? Dollar. You look familiar, Edwards. Uh... Do I? Yeah, haven't I seen your face or picture somewhere uh, before? Excuse me, will you? I want to get myself another drink. Yeah, sure. That was funny. Oh, but as I was about to say, Dollar, when you come up to San Francisco again, uh, look me up. I'll show you the town, you know, give you the grand tour. Fine, fine. Good. Drive you down the coast to Cliff House, perhaps, for lunch. To where? The Cliff House. It's a place to eat oh, there, I think. Oh, uh, yes, I, I, I've heard of the place. All right, come on now, Dollar. We're waiting for you. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe I'd... Uh, look, I'd better skip this turn. Mr. Oh, Rockwell. no, you don't. You you got to see if you can sink the eight ball. Oh, uh, well, the eight ball. maybe Mr. Gibson here would like to get that one out of the way, huh? Uh, what? Here now, take your cue and show us how it's done. <laughs> well, okay, Mr. Rockwell. Uh, you mean... Like this. Oh, no, 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 well, now that's just fine, Dolly. You ripped the cover, and that's the end of this game. Yeah. Yeah, the game is over. It sure is. And I I guess I could be corny and say the play is over, too. Is the play, Dollar? For Mr. Gibson here. Only that isn't his name. <laughs> what was that, Dollar? Well, a couple of minutes ago, you talked about making a mess of shots. Well? Well, only a Britisher calls it that. We call it Massé. Dollar. Well, I, I'm afraid I don't but understand. But I suppose even an actor might make that slip. Actor? Yeah, your real slip, though, Ashley, was in naming that restaurant up the coast. Ashley? Uh, are you addressing you me said as... Cliff House, didn't you? Are you talking about Cliff House, this side of Frisco? Oh, now, look. Yeah, that's here. right, Mr. Edwards. Cliff House. But you Jeez. said Cliff House, didn't you, Ashley? The way only an Englishman was. Did you say Ashley again? That's oh. right. Marvin Ashley, the actor who came here to murder Mr. Rockwell. Huh? Gibson, broker from San Francisco, huh? Well, not a bad act, Marvin, but uh, I'm afraid your acting days are over. Well, I'm sorry, old boy. But that's where you are uh, quite no, wrong. Wait a minute. Oh, that's a gun. Because I assure you that I am not finished until I kill this uh, despicable... He has a gun! I have a pulled you. Oh. 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 
Oh. Oh. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Good man. Not as rusty as I thought. Oh. Hey, you know something? Dear old Alvin P. Cartwright furnished the high-powered legal talent that got Ashley off with nothing more than deportation. And needless to say, Cartwright is really through with Rockwell, as it would be. Expense account total? Ah, forget it. Alvin P. handed me a check big enough for three expense accounts. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were G. Stanley Jones, Howard McNear, Chet Stratton, Marvin Miller, and Sam Edwards. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Hugh Douglas speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.